So I meant yesterday was a tough game for the uh, Niners. The Chiefs beat the Niners 28 to 18. The Chiefs advanced to six and zero. The Niners dropped to three and four. You know, as our local Niners fan here on the uh, channel, what were your main takeaways from this game? What do you think some of the problems that Niners have right now? Yeah, and uh, even recording this a day later, it's still hard to try to be you know rational. But we are a rational football league show, so we've got to do it. But the, the, to me, the 49ers' biggest problem at this exact moment after that game is clearly the offense. And I don't think this is just a one-and-done problem for the 49ers. I think this is, it's been a continuing issue for them this season, and I think it's going to continue to be an issue until some things are addressed. Interesting. Okay. The offense. See, as like a neutral bystander here, I kind of feel like the, the, offense, the Niners' offense is like fine. For the most part, that's what I, I was watching the game yesterday, right? And I noticed that they were just like pounding the rock, right? They had 209, or I'm sorry, 101 rushing yards yesterday. So it seemed like they were getting chunk plays, but kind of were stalled somewhat by by turnovers or whatnot. Um, it kind of seemed like that way for the rest of this like this entire season. I think right, uh, Mason has second most rushing yards so far this season. Yeah, something so, like right? that. Second behind. Derrick Henry, I think, potentially. Yeah. So it seems like they can move the ball, at least run the ball. Um, I don't know, man. Do you mind do you mind expanding on that? Like what what kind of problems do you see with the offense? Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the running game because it actually and not to sound like, you know, one of those Sunday morning, but you gotta start with running the ball more. The problem is honestly the run game. And, and I'll try to break this down as clearly as I can. So I don't want to say Jordan Mason's not getting the job done because you look at the raw stats you go like you said he's second in the league in rushing but here's what i go to right when we pull up next gen stats he is actually second to last in rushing epa so an expected points uh average or allowed uh he's negative 7.8 just ahead of Najee harris as for second and worst in the league he's also for rush success rate he's bottom of the league too i think he's what, bottom five yep uh he's 27th out of 35 so what's kind of happening is, and as you know, foreigner fans that watched the game yesterday, as you probably saw us too, on key situations, you know, running situations, the foreigners are not being able to convert. There's a third one early in the game that they weren't able to convert. It just it keeps it seeming to happen. And what essentially is happening, and I'll, I'll, okay, so I'll try to break this down as clear and concise as I can, is the foreigners are not able to establish the run well right now, and what that's happening from is defenses are stacking the box. I don't know how many times you saw in the game yesterday where it looked like the 49ers running eight, nine man boxes. They were just plugging up every hole pre-stab and letting their, their linebackers, you know, flow over the top and make a tackle. It's compounded with bad blocks or holdings from Jake Brendel or, you know, sometimes McKivitz or, you know, it's Aaron, Aaron, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name right now? Aaron Boone? No. Aaron Aaron Banks, I'm sorry about that. Uh, missing, you know, missing an assignment or whatever. But all that stuff puts your offense behind the chains. And this is the genius that, you know, we've come to know with, with Kyle Shanahan. When people say he's a genius, what they mean is, is he's a genius in the run game, the outside zone, being able to scheme up these great holes with these complex blocking schemes. And I'm not an O-line guy, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know what the different, you know, the different blocking formations. But... That's why you see so many running backs, you know, anyone you could plug and play in there can succeed at running back for the 49ers and before for the Broncos and Falcons, whatever team Mike and Kyle and every other Shanahan has been on. The beauty of that is as these defenses now get so absorbed and confused and have to think so much in the run game about, okay, well, I can't, you know, just follow my guards because they're going to lead me to the ball. Sometimes they're leading me away from the ball, as we kind of saw in the game with that great Brock Purdy quarterback sneak for the touchdown. So now linebackers in their head, they're thinking. That thinking creates just enough a delay that when you run a naked boot action off of it, off of that you know outside zone scheme, Debo can come behind, George Kittle can come behind, and these guys get open for these massive you know, wide open plays. You know, as people kind of say, Kyle Shanahan scheming them open. Well, when you're not getting the run established, backers aren't having to stop and think so much about the run game. They're able to just recognize pass and get into their drop sets which is taking away the throws to to kittle to debo and so on and so forth which again all putting the 49ers behind the chains which is making them have to become more of a drop back 
uh, offense, which this is the Shanahan weakness. You know, they've never been a great passing team. You know, they're not passing. They've never been a great drop back passing team. They never have been stellar at telling their quarterbacks, whether that's, you know, Matt Ryan, Brock Purdy, Jimmy Garoppolo, whoever it is. Hey, man, drop back there 40 times a game, just straight seven step, five step, three step drops and go win us this game. Because it's it's not necessarily the quarterback, whoever it is. It's that the passing schemes, the concepts aren't great more often than that. They're about, you know, average at best. And that's, I'm probably being a little too kind there. You know, a lot of, you know, corner stop routes, these whip routes, there's no, there's no flair to them. There's no, you know, you're trying to win matchups, right? And even as we've kind of, I'm sure if, again, if 49 fan watching this, you've kind of heard, the 49ers quarterbacks are, are work through progressions. They don't identify open man. They're not sitting here pre, pre-snap pre looking at matchups and going, oh, I know I have Brandon Ayuk going to back her. Let me go right there first. If Brandon Ayuk is throwing the progression, Brandon Ayuk is throwing the progression. Doesn't matter who he's matched up again. If George comes open first and he's first in the progression, that's where the ball goes. That's how it happens. So what's happening again is now the 49ers are being put in the situation where they have to consistently drop back. They haven't addressed center. Underwhelming. It, it, and again, I'm being too nice by saying it's underwhelming. It's, it's abysmal. It's terrible. Bottom of the league. You could put probably a table out there and be better. Colt McKivitz at right tackle has not been good. It has not worked. And every time he's getting beat which is putting a lot of pressure on Purdy, which is why you've been seeing him have to run for his life a lot. Again, to compound that issue with Purdy having to run for his life, and again, run game not being there, which means the play action pass game is not being there, is that these guys that the 49ers have, these very talented all-pro weapons, and Debo Samuel, and I know I'm talking a lot here, sorry. Uh, Debo Samuel and George Kittle are great at yak. Like the yards after the catch, that's their specialty. Debo is a tank. He is impossible to bring down. George is an animal. I mean, we've seen him drag defenders 5, 10, 15 yards down the field. But what they aren't is they aren't great at getting separation. George more so than Debo. You know, I'll, I'll give George his credit. He, he, he's pretty decent at getting separation. But Debo, that's not his game. You know, he's great at getting schemed open, getting the ball in his hand, let him go make something happen. The guy they were relying on to be that separating factor, Brandon Ayuk. He's fantastic at it. He, you know, I think he was top five in the league in separation last year and it was doing it again this year. Problem is with Brandon Ayuk is he's been having, he was having a rusty start to the season. Uncharacteristic drops, so on and so forth. So even a game against the Chiefs when they really need it, I think it was like third and eight or whatever, they went to him. He was trying to break open free. Purdy gave him a good ball. He dropped it kind of thing. Uh, it's kind of all led to this giant mess that is the 49ers offense. Same with Chris McCaffrey. He's another guy that's great at getting separation. Him not being there puts more pressure on guys like Debo and George Kittle to win, and they just haven't been. So now you have Brandon Ayuk, who's very unfortunately out for the season with a torn ACL and MCL, and potentially more. They keep putting that in the headlines, and it makes me very concerned about his future. Uh, that's all leading to this offense that looks terrible. I mean, there's times it clicks. You can see the offense we're familiar with when he's able to, you know, when, when the offense is able to get these runs going, then play action off of it, then, you know, party makes some great throws here and there. You can see it start to click. But it, it, when you're facing a team like the Chiefs who have this, you know, chemistry to stop it, you know, or the, uh, the plan to stop it, which isn't very complicated. You bring, you plug, you know, you bring five minutes to the line, you bring blitzes, you play man behind it. It's a very repeatable pattern for other teams to follow. And that's what has me so concerned long-term for the 49ers. They need to find an answer to this. Either you need to start finding the answer in the run game, or you need to start winning on your routes. There really isn't anything in between you can do. Right, right. Okay, so just to recap what I, what I heard, and thank you so much for that in, insight. So basically, Sorry. problems kind of chill down. No, no, this was good. The problems basically distill down to lack of run game right causing to be behind schedule which forces the niners to do stuff that you know it's not really their forte which is the drop back game three five seven step drop back game plus mary with the fact that the receivers naturally and plus tight end i guess george Kittle can be bucket into this category don't get a lot of good separation on just routes right they're, they're relying on space to get schemed open schemed open in quotes they get rely on, on yak yardage, so on and and so forth. Right, and you could put any quarterback into the situation, and it wouldn't change the problem because the problem right. isn't necessarily the quarterback. 
Right. Okay. That makes that makes sense. I know you mentioned you, you name dropped Matt Ryan too. So of course, when Kyle Shanahan worked with Matt Ryan with the Falcons, kind of the same same deal there. Where you know if you have to drop back thirty to forty times times a game, that's not good. Which all makes sense. The Falcons relied on a strong run game too. They said the play action, you know, the boot type of you know scheme there, which which makes sense. Right. So this has been a known issue for a while with Shanahan, which I think that also underlies. Uh, this is the main foundational piece with football. Like, I can't think of many guys, many teams that can win a game to drop him back 30, 40, 40 times a game. I think of that, I think of Pey- Pey- Peyton Manning, which we haven't had playing for a long time. So yeah. that that seems reasonable, right? I know you touched the very end there about how can the Niners correct this ship moving forward. So in your opinion, do you mind saying again, like, obviously they're in a deep hole right now. They're three and four, second place in the West, right? What are some measures the Niners can do starting today that, that can help correct this uh, season? Yeah, so the bigger overlying systematic problems can't, are not going to be addressed in season. The, the the terrible passing concepts you can't you're not gonna you're not gonna rewrite your playbook mid year. So the things the 49ers can do right now to improve is it's honestly the most simple thing, and I know it sucks to say that it's the most simple thing, but it's get healthy. I mean, it, it really is get healthy you know if you go into the come out the bye week you got one more week to survive you just gotta get past the cowboys but you come out the bye week you have christian mccaffrey on offense another great separator another guy who can you know correct the offensive line when they're wrong who could find holes who can get this run game going and then you get john feliciano back who's been hurt all year he should take over that center position those two factors right there could play a huge role in improving this offense right now the other thing has to be playing the rookies. You need to start letting Ricky Parasol, I, I should say start, Ricky Parasol is finally back after his terrible, horrific uh, gunshot uh, wound, you know, his attack. Thankfully, he's back. Thankfully, he's healthy. He's safe. He, play, he looked fairly well in his first action in the NFL. He did. He hopefully, did. as yeah, hopefully he continues to develop and is able to do what he did best in college, which is be a separator. He's a great route runner. He's able to use his... Um, explosiveness and speed to create timing issues for corners so he can you know throw it down right before exploding out of a break kind of a thing uh and also allowing jacob cowing to play more another guy that's a great route runner separate we saw him get a little bit of action against the chiefs and he had a screen he took for nine yards and a 50 yard some 50 60 yard catch guy's got a four three speed he's a burner they need to they need to get him more involved in this offense and let him actually play I need to see less Ronnie Bell on the field. We need a lot less of this my guy mentality. He's been a detriment on offense. He's been a detriment on special teams. I, I don't know why he's rostered, to be honest with you, but he, he need less of Ronnie Bell, more cowing and parasol. Let the future come. Get these guys experienced quick and early and, and let them develop. I Okay, that's, that's spot on. That's spot on. Okay. Well, um, one last question, and I kind of will let you go here. Do you think the Niners should be buyers here at the deadline? They bought a little bit last year with the Chase Young trade. Um, do you think potentially they should buy maybe some sort of wide out here or any other, you know, group that you think the team team needs before the uh, deadline? Wide out, I would say no. You spent two two picks this year, this past draft, on two young receivers. You gotta let them play. And you can you can win like that again. You know the the passing concepts aren't fantastic, but when you get that chemistry going with with Cowan with with Parasol, I think you're going to see a little bit more of a vibrant offense than what you're currently seeing now. Because again, when you watch the tape, which you know we've gone through now, it's it's terrible. You know the guys are just they're just not getting open. But that's again another story. The other thing I need to see the 49ers do if they're going to buy any position, it needs to be either a defensive end. Opposite, uh, opposite of Nick Bosa, and it doesn't have to be a big name, high name kind of guy. It could be a mid round pick swap, whatever it is. But you need more depth at edge and in an interior because the rush defense has not been it's not been excellent so far this year. You know, there's times we get late in the game where you know teams need to just run out the clock, and you can see you as a fan, you kind of know this game's over because they they just can't stop anymore. They, you let you know the run's coming, and they're still running it down your throat. That's a problem. If they can get some guy in the middle that can help, and I know we've kind of addressed that a little bit, and I believe in their Jacksonville, should they sell a video, there's a guy there, go check him out, who could be a potential help. But also, I'd argue safety. 
which is kind of concerning because they've spent a lot of capital recently in safety in, in Hufunga and Jair Brown and Mustafa. But in Mustafa's, you know, he's been solid so far this year, especially for a rookie play. He's playing, you know, with the guy whose hair's on fire. He's big hitting everybody. He's right where he needs to be. But Jair Brown isn't getting talked enough, but, but he has not been good so far this year. I think at last I checked, he had a, he's given up a passer rating of 127.8. And that's just not going to cut it. You know, they've, mm-hmm. they've had the blessing of um, having an older veteran back there for the last couple of years uh, who did, I think he did sign with another team this past season. So I don't know if he, they did sign Amos. I don't know if and maybe it's just elevating him and letting him play more, or you try to go out and find a guy like maybe Andre Cisco from Jacksonville, but you need to get more out of the safety position because they've been burnt too much this season. That all, all makes sense. All makes sense. Okay, so let's summarize everything we kind of talked about here. Would you say to get right back on track here, the Niners' way, run the damn ball better, so you can help out the offense, get healthy, potentially by middle of defense re and reinforcements, re reinforce the back end, and let's go back out there and get this thing back on track. Would you? Would you agree with that? That's exactly what it is. It's exactly I love it. what it I love is. It. So. One last question. I lied to you. I work with a lot of San Fran fans. Seems to be panic going on right now. What's your word to the people? How you have to give me your best in, inspirational? Because it's been it's been doom and gloom right now for the past 20, 24 hours. What what do you say to the people? The 49ers have been in a second half team under Kyle Shanahan. Things aren't looking great. They got some injuries. Ayuk's now for the season. Debo's got pneumonia in the hospital. It feels like everything's crumbling around. But don't give up just yet. The 49ers have always turned around after the bye. I expect them to do it again this year. They're going to make the corrections they need to correct. The rookies, I believe, are going to step up. We have some very talented young guys. It's been a great class so far. And don't give up on Brock Purdy. I know I've seen a lot of people having to try to defend him lately. Quarterbacks have bad games. Just in that same game, Patrick Mahomes threw two picks, had a pass rating of 44, and threw for, I think, 150 yards. Not going to end up on the highlight, you know, Hall of Fame highlight reel here. So it's okay. Deep breath for three and four. It's one game behind uh, Seattle for the division. It'll be all right. There's still plenty of time. Don't give up yet. Mm-hmm.